What's going on, y'all? It is your favorite Auntie Mo, and we are back for another, well, the new episode uh, review of season six. This is Black and Crew Chicago, um, episode one and two. I'm just going to combine them, put them both, to, uh, both together, because there wasn't a whole lot that went on um, these first episodes for me to, you know, chop it up into two different videos. <clears throat> so I'm just giving y'all one and two together um, Church announcements as always Before we get into the review If you have not done so just yet Please go ahead and subscribe to my channel Before you leave let me know that you stopped by Give me a thumbs up or thumbs down And then hit that notification bell So you will know whenever I upload new content Also make sure you are following me on my social medias They are in the description box below um, As well as a really cool place Where you can go and get some really cool merchandise It is in the description box below Support um, um, black owned businesses out there y'all um, the girl whose link is in the description box below her name is Briante Craig and she is out here doing her thing so shout out to her she's selling a lot of merchandise she's going um just check out the website if nothing else it's Christmas you might see something you like and it's also going towards a good cause it's going towards mental health awareness so check that out y'all auntie got her green lemon uh i'm sorry my green tea with lemon and a little bit of stevia in it as y'all know i'm on the keto diet so this is very keto friendly um this the uh, first two episodes of black ink crew chicago was was good it was positive there was no drama that went on and i appreciated that i'm looking forward to this new season and i'm looking forward to giving you guys the review so hopefully um y'all are ready for it because i'm ready to give it to you so let's get right on up into it all right y'all so it's opening up uh, with Ryan. He's got his 12-year-old son, Mason, with him. He's picking him up from school, you know, doing regular dad duties. And he's just going over what he's been going through for the last year. Y'all, Ryan and his hair. Mm. Out here looking like a Dominican drug lord. Donde esta la cocaína, papi? Golly, his hair. Who was just... Look like he needs to be on a, a boat in Colombia somewhere. A bunch of Spanish bitches all around him with doves flying out every goddamn well. Who done that? It's not cocaina. That's what he goddamn look like. But um, <clears throat> he's saying that he's got a lot on his plate. He's trying to juggle being a business owner, being a dad, traveling all the time. Plus, him and Rachel are not together no more. And he's got a lot of stress going on from that. Plus, a lot of family stuff is going on with him. We see Don. Um, Don is in the shop as well. Um, because Ryan is uh, picking up his, his son. You know, he's at the shop chilling with her or whatever. Um, with, with his son and with all the guys. Anyways, um, <clears throat> we see Don there. Don said life is good. Him with uh, Things with him and Ashley are going really good. I love him and Ashley's relationship. I'm so glad to see that they are still together. And that they are doing good. We ain't heard about Don being out here. Laying it low and spreading it wide. Out here in these streets. Dick slanging nowhere. So shout out to you, Don. I'm proud of you for that. Um, we see Four. He comes in. And Four says he's still doing his music thing. He's out here, um, y'all. Four ass got arrested the week prior, getting some head in the back of a car. This fool got arrested for indecent exposure. Four, you know what? I I, be, I was. But yeah, you know, whatever. Don tells him he needs to get his ass married. He needs to stop being a hoe out here in these streets. And maybe he can settle his ass down somewhere. And he, got, he ain't got to worry about trying to get caught up in no shit or whatever, right? Um, we also have uh, Charmaine. Charmaine has opened up her new tattoo shop. It is called Second City Inc. Now, she's partnered up with this chick named Jess. She's from um, London, England. And she's like this, you know, badass tattoo artists from down there and her and Charmaine are good friends and they business partners in this tattoo shop that Charmaine and open up right now I read it already we know Charmaine has opened this out a little bit out of spite because her feelings are hurt as we remember kind of wind back to last season last episode Ryan made Don the shop manager at the new shop you know that he's got going on and a part of him coming on as being the new manager he had to let Charmaine know that her services will no longer be needed right and so she's in her feelings about that so because of that she used that as fuel and motivation to go ahead and open up her own shop. Now, she's opening up this shop with Jess. It's a whole lot of girl power going on up in there, and I'm proud of it. But side note, side note, before we get into anything, Charmaine, Charmaine. I love me some Charmaine. That's my bitch. But girl, look here. I'm going to need you to wear some clothes that fit them tig old bitties. 
child, if you run, if it's an emergency and you got to run, them things pop up, you can knock your whole fucking jawline out. You need to be careful with that, girl. Do something. Trust me. I know. Mine's was out there, too. Therefore, I got, I did something about that. I got surgery to get them smaller. You can do that. Where you at right now? But then again, as we know, she's pregnant. That could be another reason why her titties are all the way out there like that. But, ooh, they out there. They out there. I'm just saying, they out there, girl. Now, Ryan is in his feelings a little bit because um, Charmaine has opened up this tattoo shop. Now, he's in his feelings because he feels like she didn't work hard like he had to work hard to get his shop. You know, he's been hustling and surviving for the last 10 years after his sister passed away. That's what gave him the motivation to open up his shop, right? And so, in these last 10 years, he's lost a lot of relationships. You know, he's lost a lot along the way. And he feels like, Charmaine, you just basically went out, got a shop, got some artists. You didn't have to work for nothing. So he's kind of in his feelings about that in a way, right? And he's, he actually meets up with Charmaine and he tells Charmaine, like, I don't understand how somebody who doesn't even tattoo can open up a tattoo shop. That don't make no sense. That but Motherfuckers do shit like that every day. You own a business and you hire motherfuckers to do the work that they supposed to goddamn do. So what? She ain't got to know how to tattoo. She learned everything about the business from you, from working under you and being your assistant and your shop manager, receptionist, or whatever hell it is. So she got connects. And then with her working at the radio station as well, she, boy, she ain't got a tattoo. She got other skills up here that she went to college for. Just saying. Now, she meets with her team and she tells them that um, they are going to be featured in Rolling Out Magazine. It's this, you know, well-known magazine in Chicago that highlights young business owners and things like that. And so they want to feature them in the upcoming magazine episode, or upcoming uh, magazine um, issue. And so, you know, she's telling the team that now she's got a eclectic bunch of, of team members there uh, at the shop. She found them all off of Instagram. And so these are all the Instagram tattoo artists that she found, but they seem kind of cool. Really the energy of everybody she got in the shop seemed really cool. It's, um, what is it? It's Fly Tatted, Prince, Dre, and Zach, and Plug. Honestly, Plug seems like the funnest one to me. He is so loud, so flamboyant, so LGBTQ, so zero fucks about you and your opinion about him and I love it to a T. I love it. I love his energy already. So, you know, the whole shop is excited and like I said, the energy of the, the team and the crew that she has there, it seems really fun. So, hopefully, you know, they, 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 she doesn't steer that shop down the same road that Brian steered Nine Mag down, you know. She knew the mistakes that he made so she can get it together so she ain't got to do them same mistakes. I'm just saying. I also forgot to mention, so the, their shop has been open for a couple of weeks and they have a very small following behind them. So Charmaine wants to make this video so she can put it on Instagram and try to get more people to start following them on IG so the word can get out about the business, right? So she has Plug record her doing this video where she's introducing everybody to the shop. She puts it on IG. Chai, they, first, they start off with 106 followers, which I mean, hey, everybody got started somewhere. So she puts up the IG video, girl, they get five more. She happy as she said, bitch, we finna celebrate this 111 followers. What? Y'all got me fucked up. She brought in cupcakes and champagne. I ain't even mad. So you celebrate some shit. So Ryan has picked Mason up from school, right? And so they're back over at his shop and they're both working on his homework. As he's working on his homework, um, Ryan's employees are steady coming up to him, asking him questions left and right because it's busy in the shop. So he's trying to help his employees answer the questions that they need to answer them as well as help his son with his homework, right? And so finally, Ryan is like, you know what, well, go ahead and pack up your stuff. I'm going to go ahead and take you upstairs. Who's upstairs, you ask? It is Rachel. She has her nail um, salon and her nail polish line, Paranova, as well. And she's actually, her shop is in the same building that Ryan is in. So he picks up his son, packs him up, and basically decides that he's going to take her up there to her shop. Now, when they get there, she's surprised. She was like, you know, oh, I wasn't expecting y'all. You know, like, what's going on? What you need? Apparently, this is supposed to be the time that he's with his dad. He's like, look here, I'm busy down at my shop. I see you kind of busy too, but um, you think he can go ahead and come up here and chill with you? You know, his homework is already done. Whoop de whoop, he can just sit up here and chill. Now, I was all away with Rachel on this. Look here. I get your business is big and it's booming and mine is new, but eventually it is going to pick up because she did have a couple of clients in there. She was like, nigga, um, don't just 
disregard what it is that I'm doing. Like, my business ain't just as important as your business. You could have called me and let me know that you were going to come up here. I don't give a damn if it is downstairs. You got two phones in your back pocket. You could have picked up the phone, text the bitch, sent the pigeon with a goddamn note on his ankle or something and come here and let me know. But for you to just be like, you know, well, hey, your business ain't really that booming. Can you come up here and let him sit and chill up here? You know, she does. Of course, she's not going to say no to her son. She lets him stay up there. But it's the whole fact that she didn't communicate, that he didn't communicate with her ass. With she gets in Ryan's ass, and I totally appreciate Rachel for that. At first, I was gonna be like, We all know Rachel always got this stank a dank look on her face. Rachel is a beautiful girl, she is she's really beautiful. I love her complexion. She's got like this butterscotch complexion. Real pretty girl. But it's this snarl, this permanent snarl, resting bitch face that she got that just makes her demeanor kind of unpleasant. You know what I'm saying? So as soon as I seen her, I was like, oh, first I was thinking, okay, here we go with the shits. She's going to be on some bullshit. But you know what I'm saying? She, I was all the way with her on that. I don't care about you doing what you need to communicate with me and let me know what the hell is going on. You know what I'm saying? So she gives it to his ass. I was like, go ahead, Rachel. Let them motherfuckers. Don and Ashley end up going out to dinner. Now, when they're um, out to dinner, Don can see that Ashley is real down. She's sad. Come to find out, she went seen her doctor. Come, She has um, a lump that's in her breast. She had had this lump previously, and I don't know if it went away. Um, she had a mammogram, and they told her that it wasn't that serious for her to worry about at that time. So now, here we go, some time has passed and the lump has gotten bigger. So now she's worried. She done went to her doctor's office and now the doctor want to do a biopsy on it to see what it's done. She said surgery on there, but I work in a medical field. I know what she means. She means a, a biopsy is what they want to get done to see if it's something cancerous or if it's something benign that they don't have to worry about. So... You know, her and Don both are extremely worried. They got two young babies, and I know Don like, bitch, you can't leave me with these goddamn kids. Shit, I love you, but bitch, please only with these goddamn kids. You know what I'm saying? Not saying I'm saying, but yeah, I already know what the motherfucker thinking. You know what I'm saying? So later on, we end up finding out she goes to the doctor. She does have a biopsy done. Goddamn production make that shit seem so goddamn dramatic. They pulling out the big surgery light and got all of this set. Girl, she was still done up with a makeup done, looking flawless. Ashley got some, one thing about Ashley, two things for certain, one thing for certain, two things for sure. Her makeup and her hair stays on point. Stays on point. And this episode was no different. She had her natural hair pulled back, nice straight, bone straight, face was popping and all of that. Go and get her little biopsy on her titty. You better go, girl. So she ends up getting the results back and it is benign. It's non-cancerous, so they don't have nothing to worry about. Don, she ain't finna leave you with them babies. So don't worry about it. <laughs> Y'all gonna live to fight another day. <laughs> it's time for the Rolling Out Magazine photo shoot and um, interview that's going on. And um, they're all at Charmaine's new shop, right? Now, Charmaine, she's got her business shit down. She's got the carpet rolled out for them. She has a little spark, um, little studio part set up where they can do a photo shoot, where they can do their interview. And everything is set up and it's all out nice. The whole crew is there. You know, her new artist or whatever. They dressed up to the T, looking real Real good baby when I tell you the plug had his little tennis skirt on the plug is fly his whole style all that I have a feeling the plug is gonna bring us a lot of entertainment this season and I'm looking forward to it so Charmaine and Jess, they're sitting down to do the interview. And so the lady who's interviewing them asked them, you know, what was her inspiration or what made her decide to go ahead and open up her own shop? With her being at 9 Mac for so long, why would she just cut that off and just decide to open up her own, you know, tattoo shop? Now, in a side note, she says that she doesn't want to, this is what she says, you know, in her green screen. She doesn't want to bad mouth the guys or 9 Mac because Rolling Out Magazine has been, uh, you know, a big engine pushing getting on mag out there and getting them known and they've always been there and supported them but at the same time she gonna have to keep it real and 100 with it baby she ends up going in it's like look here i was just sick and tired of them not respecting me them looking at me like the little sister that they don't give a damn about and just throwing me to the side and just disregarding me and i just wanted to do something for me and i wanted to have something that was women empowerment you know girl power we doing this whole girl movement thing and so i just hooked up with my business partner here we just got to, you know, make that thing 
pop. It was a good little interview that she had. They did a photo shoot and everything was really, really cute. It was a cute little scene. So later on, we are at this event the Rolling Out magazine is having. Now, Charmaine and her crew are there. They have posters of them up everywhere from the photo shoot. Now, it turns out that this is going to be a party that is for Charmaine and her shop. Now, Ryan, Ford, Don, and all of Nine Mag, I don't know if they were under the impression that this is just a regular rolling out event and that they were invited to come to, you know, please come, whoop de whoop, yada, yada, yada. So, of course, they come rolling in with a whole goddamn, the whole crucial conflict posse behind them all up in the party and when they get up in there they see that it's posters and pictures of Charmaine and her shop and her artists all around the whole event and Ryan is like okay what the fuck is this I didn't sign up for this shit you know again once again he's low key hating on Charmaine because he feel like she didn't work hard for the shit like he had to so you know he supports her you know Mikey Nine Nine and all of that but in a way, he's hoping that she'll fail and she'll fall flat on her face so he can be like, mm -hmm, bitch, I told you so. I told you so. So she ends up seeing them when they walk in. And Jess is kind of like telling Charmaine, like, you know, just, we just gonna chill. You know, it's just a party. You know, it is what it is. We ain't got a trip, none of that. Charmaine, you know, this bitch just can't let shit go. She decides she wants to go over there and say hello to them. But in true Charmaine fashion, she just can't say hello and just be cordial with the shit and just move on. Charmaine's hello is, hey guys, how's it going? So I'm going to tell y'all how y'all made me mad and why I had to go ahead and open up my own shop. Ryan is like, hold on, Charmaine, listen, we ain't got to do all that. She's like, no, nah, no, nah, I just got to say what I got to say. Y'all know Charmaine's mouth is very wide very loud, and it can carry very far. So, she's just basically, and I'm not gonna go through this shit again because it was the same shit from the last season. She just feels like they didn't respect her, they didn't love her, they did her raggedy, whoop de whoop yada, yada, yada. It is what it is. She just decides, I'm not gonna talk to y'all. They sitting up there looking at her like, we don't give a fuck anyway. So, do you, boo-boo? They really don't care. Afterwards, Ryan is in his car. He hurt. His feelings is hurt. He probably cried when he got in that bitch by himself. He calls Rachel and, you know, just to see what's up with the boys. Like, it's probably 10 something, 11 something at night. He's like, is the boy asleep? She's like, um, yeah, they went to sleep like 20 minutes ago. She sounded like she was snarling through the damn phone. Just this is how she sound like she is. And so he's like, oh, okay. All right. This nigga lingering around on the damn phone. I don't know if he was waiting on her to invite him to come over to the spot or what. But that's when we really see the, the more of what's going on behind Ryan and where all of this, you know, the stress comes from. Well, he says after Rachel put him out, he didn't want to get a house because, you know, again, he's always on the road. And in a way, he's hoping that him and Rachel will be able to salvage their relationship and he can move back into the house. But as of right now, he ain't got no house to go to. He ain't got no woman to go home to. He ain't in the same uh, roof with his kids to go to sleep and wake up to. So he hurt. This nigga is staying at his shop. In a way, I feel him as far as not getting the house because, you know, you always moving and traveling and going here, here, that, and the other. But, bruh, you need to go ahead and get your own spot because Rachel don't seem like she going to take your ass back. That's just... I don't know because then again, he's used to doing that song and dance with her. And he's she's allowed him to come back and do this and the other. But this time, I don't think she playing, bruh. Like, that shit with Kat hurt her. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't think she gonna come back to you. So, y'all, y'all, um, Ryan is at the shop sleeping on the air mattress and you mattress and shit. And he just, he, you know, he's stressed out. Nigga going through it. You know what I'm saying? I feel, I feel bad for him. So the next day, we have Ryan, Four, and Don. They're at the shop talking. Of course, they're talking about what happened the night before with them running into Charmaine at that rolling out event. And so Ryan is just basically like, he don't give a damn about none of that that's going on. He's got other stuff that he's stressed out a bit, uh, stressed out about because he just missed a recent family event. It was the 10-year anniversary they celebrated of his sister, Nova, who was uh, murdered by her boyfriend. Um, she was killed in domestic violence. He ended up murdering her and her eight-month-old baby. I want to say she was 24 years old and the baby was eight months old. Um, the boyfriend ended up shooting and killing her. And, and oh, God, it was, I remember hearing about that on the news. I just didn't know that that was his sister. Because I want to say he was a, a NBA player or something like that. But he was he was known. I, if I'm not mistaken, he was either NBA or football player or something like that. But 
He was so sad. Very, very sad. And so Ryan, he said that before. He ain't been right ever since his sister was murdered. So, you know, he's got that going on. He's been real stressed out about that. And so he's uh, missed the family event that was going on. And, you know, his family has been trying to get in contact with him. He's just been down and out, staying to himself because he just really ain't want to been, you know, messing with nobody. He ain't want to really want to communicate with nobody because he's just, he's got a lot going on. Nigga sleeping at a shop at the air mattress. He don't know what the fuck to do with his life right now. Shit is in shape. Charmaine and Neek got married. Congratulations to them. Um, of course, I, like I already knew, uh, we didn't know how or when they got married, um, but she said they ended up going to the courthouse and getting married. And of course, his mama, his mama and her mama both were pissed off about that because they wanted to be there. They wanted to share in that moment. They wanted to be involved in it, but I get it. That's them. That's their life. That's their moment. And that's what they wanted to do. It ain't nothing wrong with that. Me and my husband went to the courthouse and got married. And then we went to Hawaii on a hunt moon baby and it was the fucking bomb okay we have no regrets regrets no regrets whatsoever about it but um that's cute congratulations to them they got married or whatever so the next day um ryan is at the shop and everybody's just there chilling four and don are there and you know the the all of his staff and our artists all over whatever, right so his mom and his sister end up popping up on his ass at the shop now i said in the beginning he ain't been communicating with nobody he was stressed out so they worried about him and especially because he missed such uh important events that they celebrate every year and so for him to miss that they like you know something is going on when you know what's wrong so they end up you know popping up on him at the shop and just you know trying to get in his head and see what's going on and so he finally breaks down and it was good to see ryan break down and be vulnerable there's nothing uh, sexier to me to see a man that can actually be in touch with his feelings and communicate and not be afraid to just break down and so for so long ryan said he felt like he had to be strong because you know his mother was very strong his sister noble was very strong and she was the one that kind of was the glue that kept all the family together and so with her dying he felt like he had to step in and be strong but at the same time you know he just never took the time to really grieve and to really deal with things and so you know because of that and and him dealing with that and then with the loss of his, him and rachel's relationship and you know him losing being that opportunity to be there in the house with her and the kids just everything going on has him in a really depressive state and he actually breaks down and cries you know what i'm saying and i was i was kind of happy not happy to see him cry but happy for him to just fucking realize like look here nigga you ain't superman superman got fucking kryptonite to take his ass goddamn down too so you got to be open and realize that hey nigga okay i i need some fucking help i need to do something to get myself in order you know what i'm saying so it was good that he he, he was able to open up and break down like that y'all so we see zach and drea they are two of um charmaine's artists zach is this um we get a little bit of background on them zach is mixed white and black he was too black for the white kids too white for the white kids growing up and so he wants to do tattooing drea is a former stripping weed man and so long story short between them they end up doing these couple tattoos on this this couple that came in a pair of huskies with some crowns on it i mean the tattoos were nice cute detail well i mean it, it is what it is and they go on the ice cream date it's cute or whatever cute little scene they fern getting it they go end up fucking and then having a problem at the shop i can see that it ain't never good it ain't never good to fuck one of your employees or not your employee, your co-workers, none of that. It ain't never good. So, child, they fucking now, they probably gonna be fighting or some shit later. We gonna end up seeing. Later on, we see a really good scene that I like. Four and Don end up taking Ryan rock climbing because they wanted to be able to talk to him and let him know like, hey, we see what's going on with you and you need to get some help. Now, Ryan is a typical, typical black man that feels like, why would I go to a therapist and talk to somebody who don't know shit about me tell me what I need to do and and how I'm supposed to feel and all of that like I, I don't need to go to therapy I can just handle this shit on my own in a way low-key my husband is a nigga like that but we don't even talk about that shit right there I love my baby but he's a typical man when it comes to shit like that and so Don and four tell him especially four he's like nigga you see where I was just a few years ago with what i had going on with me and you know where i was in my mental state so please don't say you don't need therapy because i was there and i was just like you thinking that i didn't need therapy and it ended up the shit end up 
really working for me. So it's something that he's considering. He ain't saying yes. He ain't saying no. He's thinking about it. Nigga, you better go get you some goddamn help or you end up in a state that you can't pull your ass up out of. Next, y'all, we have this scene with Neek and Charmaine. They are meeting with both their mothers, right? Now, <laughs> it's so cute. Um, they are having dinner or lunch, whatever it was that they have, and they're sitting down and they're talking with the mamas. And so, of course, Neek's mama is so damn cute. She's this little Nigerian feisty ass woman, and she is getting in their ass. Now, Charmaine mama getting in their ass too, but not much, not as much as Neek mama. She's like, y'all was supposed to go and and to the to the um chapel and and in the church and get married. She's supposed to have on a white dress. She's supposed to have on tuxedo and then all this other bullshit. Y'all just going to lope and, and I ain't with that shit and technically you ain't even my daughter-in-law until you got on a white dress and you walk down the aisle and then I get to see it because if I don't see it then technically you ain't my damn daughter-in-law. Charmaine looking like damn mama really. I was even like damn why are you just gonna tell that bitch some shit like that? So Charmaine's mom is like, look here, we need to go ahead and start planning the wedding. Now, Nick tells them, well, Nick and Charmaine both tell them, you know, like, well, something's come up and we might end up having to push the wedding back just a little bit. And, you know what I'm saying? He ends up handing her this envelope and it's like, you know, this will explain everything why we need to push it back. Now, once again, Nick's mom like, what the hell you mean we got to push the wedding back? Are you fucking crazy? I already wasn't there for the first one. They open up this envelope and it's um, a card in there and it says, congratulations. They open it up and of course it is a pregnancy test. They reveal to them that they are pregnant and Charmaine's mother is beaming with excitement. In a way, I was kind of crying. And on the inside, I was crying because y'all know Charmaine's mom just died, you know, um, about a month or so ago. And she actually put this on Instagram that... Um, the day before her mother died, her mother had said to her she was so excited because her baby is about to have a baby. And so her mother at least knew that she was married and knew that she had a child on the way, you know, before she passed away. So regardless, if Charmaine ever sees this, which I doubt she ever sees this, but girl, if you ever see this, your mama is going to live through that baby that she about to have. So trust and believe your mama ain't going nowhere. She ain't going nowhere. She all around you. And this baby that she about to have is going to be every bit of your mama trust and believe because that's how i was feeling with with my son because um, you know my I lost my mother in uh, 07 of cancer and so i didn't have her going through i didn't have no mother figure going through my pregnancy but my son is every bit of my mama when i tell you <sighs> that's a little nigga here yeah. But of course, Neek mama with her old mean Nigeria now. She like, uh, -uh I ain't happy about that. No, I'll be happy once y'all go in a goddamn church and get married and she got on a white dress. Neek is like, look here, and I'm glad he stood up for his wife. He's like, look here, this is me and this is my wife. And this is what we wanted to do. And this is how we're going to do it. And you are just going to have to accept it. My man had no choice but to accept that goddamn shit. I'm proud of you, Neek. You stick up for your wife. God damn it. That was cute, y'all. This next thing was kind of hard. So Ryan, you know, he breaks down and finally goes to a therapist and he's meeting with the therapist, right? And so um, he's talking about um, how he started up tattooing. He started tattooing a week after his sister was murdered. Now, um, he said in the very beginning of the season, like the first season, um, that his sister gave him, I want to say it was like $200 to go and buy his first tattoo gun. And that was going to be, that was basically the investment that she made in him starting a tattoo. Now, the night that um, she was murdered, he says that he had gotten out there, got drunk and hung over. He was supposed to go over there to her house, but he got drunk, fucked up and passed out. And then that's when she got murdered. The next day, his dad called her. I know the the next day his dad called him and said that she had gotten murdered now a week after no not to no um right after the investigation him and his dad actually had to go to the house and clean up the crime scene after they had done all their investigation collected evidence and whatnot and he said that there was blood everywhere not only his sister's blood but the blood of the baby and he could actually see the path that his sister took trying to get out and save her life. He could see where she was first shot. He could see where the baby had fell, where the baby was shot in the baby's blood to the where her sister, to where his sister finally, you know, ended up in the last place she was shot and died at. And so that's very vivid for him. He can remember every bit of that. And he says, you know, what you see on TV, on crime scenes and how blood is, you know, after it's dried, after it's been there for a while, you know, it, it's nothing like what you see on TV. So I can, I, I, I have no idea, no idea whatsoever 
that would be like to have to be in his shoes. But that alone explains a lot of his his hardness and his toughness to, to have to go, to have to clean up your sister's blood, your sister and your niece's blood from such a horrific, horrific murder. I couldn't imagine what he's going through. But he was able to see that that was a lot of, you, a lot of the, 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 the built up stress and, and anxiety and, and anger and things like that that he has in him. And so, you know, he's, He's willing to work through that to, you know, try to uh, get a better him. You know what I'm saying? So I'm proud of him for that. Now, she seems like she'll be a really good therapist for him. He seems like he's open to the therapy. So I'm hoping that he does stick it out and he works through it. I actually seen him and Charmaine on The Breakfast Club not too long ago. About, a, you know, just a few days ago. And he was saying that this season he was able to open up more and get the help that he never even knew that he needed. But, y'all, that was the end of the second episode right there. Like I said, I combined episode one and two together. So hopefully I didn't make this, I didn't make this review too long for you guys. Of of course, if there, if there was anything that I missed, please drop it down below and don't forget to let me know. Um, also, as always, like, comment, subscribe, share, and Auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.